So after an entire summer of hibernating, my old faithful, my original riding mower with my uh, wrapped graphics here, starts but then smokes a ton, you know, oil smoke. And then after it runs for a bit with smoke, it uh, quits. A lot of oil comes out of here. And then once it runs for a while, it'll quit. Any of you guys know what's up? Because I, uh, I'm thinking maybe my, uh, something's blown. You see that? This is a high throttle. Ooh. I'm just gonna shut it off. I think it's a. Uh... I think it's something major inside. I've uh, never actually encountered that. You know, me, Mr. Mechanic. But uh, you guys are the uh, experts. I know I got experts out there. Anyway, let me know what you think. See you guys later. So after posting my little video on Instagram and asking my buddies if uh, they know what could be wrong with this, uh, had one guy who told me to try running it with the... Uh, air cleaner off so you know at the time I did try that um, but everything seemed to be okay but I didn't really check closely that um, what was in there was actually not fuel it looked like fuel but when I stuck my finger in there it was actually uh, oil and fuel which is what causes that so I'm thinking that um, my float needle is um, stuck because during the summer when I was hibernating I didn't drain my gas I had uh, fuel inside the bowl so what happens is during the uh, time that it's been sitting it uh, gums up because as you guys know um, gas is 10% uh, ethanol ethanol gums up so if it gums up right around the seat and needle area it will not have a good seal so therefore fuel continuously runs into the reservoir here overflows in the carburetor trickles down into the uh, through the intake manifold into the combustion chamber into the crankcase so that's how I knew that uh, this was my problem because when I checked my oil and I just did an oil change before I put it away it uh, is there is the full line which is where I you know, obviously, you know, filled it up to when I did the oil change. But now it's actually up to here. See? So all this, there's like two liters of fuel in there. And uh, I, I did remember filling this to at least halfway. And <laughs> it's empty now. So all this gas has gone into the crankcase. So, um, I'm sort of, you know, happy because uh, this is an easy fix. I mean, easy in terms of a mechanic saying it's easy, but... So basically, I'm just going to uh, take the carburetor off and clean it. And uh, once that's done, I'm going to clean this because there's some few, uh, gas re uh, oil residue in here. And then uh, once I've done that... I'm going to drain the fuel, uh, drain the gas, uh, Jesus Christ, it is early. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, drain the Earl, fill it up with fresh Earl. That's how they used to say oil in the, uh, olden days. And, uh, replace the air filter, and that ought to do it after I put gas in it. Anyway, so, uh, I'm going to do that now. 
So the first thing we do is uh, disconnect the um, fuel line. There's a pain to take off. This hose is new, so it was really rubbery. It really mounted on there well. Didn't even really need these clamps. So I figured since I'm doing this, um, and this is my own personal mower, right? Um, I'm gonna go fancy. I'm gonna put a see-through um, gas filter on there, and I'm gonna add a fuel cutoff switch so this doesn't happen again. Just turn the switch off, run it uh, until it burns up all the fuel in here, then you're good for storage. So there you go. And I'll uh, zip tie that right there. I'm going to take that off here. Remove those. Like I said, I cleaned this carburetor before I uh, put it out for the uh, winter. So this just uh, some more bolts there. You know what I find is that I'm more careful with my personal equipment than I am with equipment that I'm flipping. That's just natural because you know that this is going to be yours and you're keeping this for your own use. You take extra attention with the stuff that um, is yours. That's just natural, you know what I'm saying? Um, ideally, you want to be this careful with everything you do. Anyway, so uh, make sure you uh, take a picture of the linkage. Hole to the right, first hole on the left for the choke. This is for the throttle. Remember the little one, the little wire goes into this little one. It's kind of obvious, but it's better to take a picture anyway. I like to just uh, lay that there nice and gently and hope that you don't touch it or push it because you wanna, you don't want this stuff to go all over the place. This uh, choke area thing, it's just floating there. It's just sitting there. So, uh, bowl's pretty clean. Carburetor's very clean. I don't see any evidence of any gunk in either the seat area or the emulsion tube area. Floats clean. Needles clean. So why would the fuel go through that? plot thickens. So I just uh, really went over this again. Much cleaner now. I even uh, got these crevices here with the uh, hard brush just to get that clear. People ask me why I don't wear gloves. Uh, I used to, but um, you know, gloves, you just, there's something about it. I, I know you other mechanics out there know what I'm talking about. You just get a better feel of things and you work better with your bare hands, you know? Just wash your hands. And, you know, you're on this life for, you're in this uh, world for one life, right? And, um, yeah, as long as you don't have a hand modeling career, it's fine. Back to get dirty. And clean that out a little bit. Um, just to be thorough, as long as I have this open, and I know it's clean, but like I said, it's your own stuff, so I'm going to take the emulsion tube uh, jet out. You can only use, you can only, you should only use one of these uh, carburetor tools because it's uh, 
such a very thin head, you know. This way it'll prevent you from, not prevent, but it'll help you to lessen the possibility of scooping that bolt. It's made out of brass, so it's very, very delicate. So I was really careful in getting this out. And even being careful, some grains of brass that came off. See, it's very sensitive. So, uh, you know, that, it's a little dirty. Holes look okay, but if you can look in the, in the light, there is residue build up there, you know? Everything's got to be shiny and smooth and... See, the holes could be blocked up. See, you could see through one of them, but then the other one doesn't... doesn't really... you can't really see through it. I mean, this all matters in how it runs, you know? So we're going to get a wire and stick it through the holes and uh, get that off. Much better. All right, so I gotta tell you, this is one of the cleanest carburetor jobs I've done. I won't use a whole can of carb cleaner on here, but uh, it's got a lot of holes, you know? Even really small ones inside here, you know, along the wall. I'm going to put it all back together now. So I got it back together again. I'm uh, pretty confident that this is going to work well. Um, and I know it's seating correctly because when you have it like that, right, and you blow into it, you can blow into it, you know, with some pressure. But then when the fuel fills up the bowl, pushes the float, needle goes up and seats, you're assuming the float is closing it like that. So you flip it upside down and now you blow into it. And you can't. So I'm going to put this back now. So everything's back on again. The new fuel line with the new fuel filter and the fuel cutoff, which I've shut it off. Okay, down is off. Linkage is correct because you know that this is the choke and the flap is closed when you're at choke on the throttle right there. And when you pull it back to high throttle, that's where it's fully open. There you go. So um, I'm going to fill it with some fuel and see if it leaks. So that wasn't fun. Uh, I put fuel in it and um, gas poured out of here. This uh, cutoff switch is a piece of junk. Leaks all over the place. It's busted. So now i got to go find a hose, because if I take that out, it won't reach the carburetor, because I already cut it. See what I'm saying? Well, two fuel filters is better than one. So this is gravity-fed, and as you can see, it is free-flowing now. And so far, no leaks in the carburetor. At least, uh... What I could tell. So, uh, on to the old change. I'm going to leave that off for now. So, I don't need to tell you how messy an old change could be. It is going to be messy. So, not that my driveway is any brand spanking new or anything, but you want to kind of prevent uh, as much as possible. Anyway, so this is the. Uh, Reservoir you just basically loosen this nut and drain all the uh, Oil in this case. We're gonna see way more than it's supposed to and uh, because it's filled with tons of gas and uh, You're gonna get a con canister to uh, contain all that So I have like a uh, container I took from my neighbor's garbage <laughs> Hey, man, whatever works, right? Uh, this doesn't have to be too tight 
has threads in it, Teflon tape on it. So here it comes, should be a lot of stuff. Look at that, look how watery that is. It's all gas, man. Look at that, all gas. And Earl. It's like water. Terrible. Yep, and it's making a mess, just like I said. Damn it. Don't lose that. Look at that. Dripping in the back there. There's got to be a better way, man. Look at the design here, man. Why don't they just like have a little spout that's sharp right here, you know, so it comes out? <sighs> Honestly, the engineers. While you're in this area, you may as well clean up a bit. So I wipe that stuff down so it's not all oily and yucky. So uh, now you have to. Uh, there's still some oil and gas in the in the pit, in the chamber. So try to use your hands and turn it. I can't do it with one hand. And uh, to get the remaining fuel out of the uh, engine. Some came out, but not much at all. I'm going to put this back. Tighten it. And fill a few ounces. And recheck the uh, dipstick to make sure uh, you're at levels. So we've got some uh, 5W30 here, which is uh, almost equivalent to SAE30, which is recommended for small engines. So I'm just going to pour like, uh, I think I remember it's uh, at least a quart and a half for these engines. Uh, but I'll just do like three quarters of a quart first and then check the levels. So I've got it to uh, right about full, exactly full actually. And then some of it will go into the chamber and uh, you just add it later. But uh, I'm going to try to start this now. I'm sure there's going to be lots of smoke. the way back still running too fast so anyway looks like I fixed it pretty well and all it was was the uh, carburetor needed cleaning and uh, gave it an oil change uh, I might
might have to uh, make sure before I store it for next winter to uh, drain all the gas. That way we won't have any problems. Anyway, see you guys next time. Mowers and blowers.